So after watching episode 10 of Tomonachi Game, uh, I feel like I had to talk about it. I've enjoyed the series so far, and so far I, I really haven't really wanted to talk about it. But after episode 9, and especially 10, I was like, I, I feel like I have to talk about this because it's it's good. The majority of the episodes have been good. I, I mean, like I said, you know, 9 and 10, real standouts. But the whole... Um, anime in general has it's been really entertaining uh following along with the mind games and what people think they're in charge when they're actually not because someone else is doing something behind the lines uh it's just really interesting to uh follow so kind of my process for this video is i'm going to do a episode breakdown of you know the key points uh, essentially give you a spark notes of the episode and then in the end i'll kind of talk about what I think is going to happen, what I, I thought was the purpose of some things during the episode, uh, and stuff like that. So episode 10 starts off by Yuichi telling Tenji that there's only one thing left to do in order to win the game, and that is to dis totally destroy all the relationships in Group K. He's going to do this by using Maria to make a honey trap. Uh, Maria does this by thanking Chisato instead of Hyaktaro, um, after they saved her, you know, she thinks uh, Chisato first, even though he was the one that didn't immediately jump out. He just kind of was forced by Hyaktaro to help. Um, and she does this to make Hyaktaro jealous of Chisato. Uh, thus creating, you know, tension between the two. And then as the members of Group K and Maria are walking back to camp, uh, Maria really has no problems trying to manipulate Hakuro into believing that she's falling for him. I mean, Hakuro, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve. You can tell immediately what this guy's thinking. Uh, he's probably never been with a girl. He always flustered, things like that. So it's an easy in for Maria to kind of prod him to be like, man, you know, I really wish I didn't have to be in the group that I am, I didn't have to be a Fuichi, but, you know, what can I do? Um, kind of trying to maybe turn Jokdoro, um on his current group to, you know, play the knight in shining armor. Uh, who knows? But once they get back to camp, Yuichi returns from bringing food to Tenji, and he goes right into the evil guy persona. I mean, I really like this scene. He forces his hand around Maria and kicks his feet up on the, the table to look like, you know, a delinquent, a, ba a bad guy, things like that. Um, this causes Hyaktaro to easily get riled up. I mean, come on. You, you see it right away. He just blows up about everything. Um, but Maria steps in, explaining that this is exactly what Yuichi wants. He wants Hyaktaro to get mad and punch him. That way he breaks a rule and his team loses. Uh, Yuichi does not like this. He, you know, uh, clicks his lips or whatever, showing that you gave up my plan. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Um, but I also believe this is part of the plan. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading too much into things. But since she's part of management, she's also trying to stoke the fire and make it more entertaining for herself. I get that. So maybe exposing the plan could also be part of Yuichi's plan. I have no, he's playing like 5D chess, I have no clue. Um, but Maria exposing the plan, obviously it, it sets Yuichi off, he grabs her hair and is being more of the bad guy. Uh, Group K jumps in t and tells Manabu, the, I love that guy by the way, the faces he makes, you can tell that he's a real evil dude. Uh, Anyway, he tells him that in-game violence is clearly against the rules. I mean, it, it's breaking the rules. Come on, it's disqualify this guy. But Anubu, he explains that, well, that rule is really only applicable to the other team. He's like, you know, violence against a teammate is fine. It's whatever. It's just that it's prohibited when it's violence against the other team. And he shows that big evil uh, smile. And it really, sh I don't know, I just, I really like that scene. But after that, that causes Hyaktaro to bring up the idea for Maria to switch teams. You know, get away from this evil guy. Leave him alone. Uh, but Chisato stops him, and um, saying that the, the situation is almost too perfect. Like, you know, usually if it seems too good to be true, it is. 
And in this situation, he's like, it, it seems too good. It's too perfect of a, a situation to where it, it, something's fishy here. And that uh, she might be playing them. Um, this creates an argument between the two. And he talks about uh, Chisato's like, oh, you you know, I've never been with a girl. It's like, how the hell do you know all this stuff? And then Hyakutaro's like, you know, I'm not like you. I'm not just out there playing, messing around and all that stuff. And this causes almost a fight. I mean, he grabs the collar. Um, but K steps in and stops them. That way, you know, nothing goes on. But you can still kind of see the plan of Yuichi. It's maybe starting to bear some fruit. And you can see some tension. Uh, but you never know where, where it will go because K steps in and stops it. He's like, hey, stop. This isn't going to help anything. Uh, let's go towards the future. So K's like, how about we ask Captain? You know, we don't make decisions in this group without asking the Captain on what he wants to do and all that stuff that's we've gotten this far. Let's continue the game plan. Yuichi believes that the Captain will agree to let Maria switch teams. Um... But as it goes on and they come back, it turns out that Yuichi's plan falls through. Because uh, Group K won't let him switch. Uh, I kind of forgot the total reason why they... I don't know if they explained why they said no. Um, but pretty much whatever, the plan falls through doesn't work. Because they won't let Maria switch teams. I assume that if they switch teams, she'd find out where the captain is. And then tell Yuichi. Uh, something like that, but... Of course, that plan seems almost too easy to happen, so of course it's not going to happen. The series isn't that simple. Uh, there's always something going on. Um, but anyway, so instead, um, Jakuro switches teams. He's like, you know, I'll help this lady. I'm going to switch teams, runs over to Manabu, even though the other girl's like, no, don't do that. He's like, well, you know, too bad. Manabu, I'm switching. And of course, Yuichi's like, I welcome you with open, open arms. It's like, of course I'm going to accept you. It's like, I want you in this group. That way, I can manip manipulate you, you know, so on and so on. After Hyakutaro switches sides, uh, he goes right after Yuichi. You know, the whole violence is okay against your teammates, but not the other team. Now that he's a part of Group C, he goes straight for Yuichi, trying to punch him. Yuichi saw right through him. He knew it was going to happen. So he stops him, you know, trips him or whatever. Um... But ties him up. And then Yuichi uses Maria to try and get the location of Group K's captain from Hyakutaro. And, you know, using her womanly charms. Um, but Hyakutaro reveals that he doesn't know where the captain is. Like, they never told him. And when he was going to go talk to the captain, K stopped him and, you know, I forgot what he said. But anyway, he stops him. So Hyakutaro does not know. Um, then Yuichi realizes that he's been had. It's like allowing Hyakuto to come over created a bomb within the team because eventually he's going to blow up and be the downfall of um, Group C. Uh, and yeah, he realizes he's been had. Um, and then we find out that Juzo, I think that's his name, uh, is not Group K's captain, but it's actually K. You know, they, they put it, it's like, oh, this guy just sits there, always has his arm crossed, looks like a big, tough guy. He's not the captain. It's, you know, essentially the little weasel. Which, looking back at it, I was like, how did I not see this coming? It's like, of course. You know, the, the big guy can always use muscle to get what he wants. That's, you know, you can force people. You don't have really have to manipulate. It's the little guys that have to manipulate their way around in order to survive, essentially. So it makes sense that Kay's the captain. I don't know why I never thought of that. But big reveal. And he's like, oh, I'm some genius, you know. I've already won this game. I'm, you know, three steps ahead of Yuichi. Yuichi's so dumb. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but Kay calls Yuichi telling him that they, they're they one. It's like they have the, the victory secured for the game. And it's just a matter of time until they figure out or find out where Tenji is. Um, then he, you know, ends the call. Obviously, Yuichi, not happy. You know, he thought he was in control, but it turns out that someone on the other team is just as in control, if not more, than Yuichi. So, as, um, after Yuichi finds out that Hyakutaro does not know, uh, Group K sends 
Chisato and Banri, Banri to watch over the members of Group C so they don't go anywhere uh, while they, you know, pretty much f find out where Tenji is. Maria, uh, some time passes, Maria walks off, soon to go to the bathroom because uh, Yuichi's like, hey, where are you going? She's like, you're not supposed to ask a female that. Um, but as she's going, she's stopped by K. I guess, going back, I assume that she was going to do something like go to management or something. Like, I don't think she was just going to the bathroom or whatever. I think she was going to go do some other stuff. But anyway, whatever. She's stopped by K. Uh, K reveals to Maria that he knows she's a part of management. And then that she, that she seems like the type of person to choose fun over reason and logic um, and that if she betrays Yuichi um, it, she'll have the most fun essentially she'll have more fun with Kei than she is having with Yuichi so she tells um, he tells her that she should you know betray Yuichi and switch teams um, he says that if she betrays Yuichi uh, she'll get to watch the overconfident, sadistic Yuichi crumble into a pathetic failure. She really likes that idea, so she calls uh, Yuichi asking her to tell her where Tenji is. Uh, Tenji is hiding because she's not alone and can bring supplies, or because she is alone and she can bring supplies to Tenji. Yuichi tells Maria uh, pretty much right away, which I assumed is part of the plan like I don't know it, it seems like they're, they're I don't believe that Yuichi is gonna lose because it see it's too easy like it, it's one of those it, it's flowing along too nicely for group K so I, I don't think it's gonna work out anyway as um, they get off the phone uh, Yuichi or after they get off the phone when Yuichi tells her um, where Tenji is, she comes back and walks over to K. Like she walks over, and um, then Yuichi realizes that she betrayed him, and he just you know gave up the win essentially. Uh, Yuichi falls to his knees and he screams. While it cuts to Maria hiding behind K with you know a little sinister smile, she can tell she enjoys you know Yuichi falling apart. She um, finds it enjoyable. Um, and it pretty much ends with K calling Tenji, explaining how bad Yuichi is, uh, and that Tenji was abandoned um, by Yuichi, and that causes Tenji to scream. Like he screams at K over the phone, and that scream ultimately gives him up. Uh, he like K had the the rough area; he was walking around, but he didn't know because Yuichi didn't tell Maria where he was, just general location. Um, so, then it cuts to Kay saying, I found you. And then he, he's, Tenji's like, oh crap. <laughs> he's like, he's right there. Um, then the episode ends on a cliffhanger um, with Manabu saying, the winner of the friendly hide and seek is dot dot dot. And it cuts to the sinister smile. And that's the end of the episode. So now going to my thoughts. Obviously, like, maybe... You know, hindsight 2020, the main characters are pretty much always going to win. I don't see how they would lose, uh, because then the series wouldn't you know, continue, obviously. But, as I, I kind of touched on it earlier, it's, you know, Yuichi has always been ahead of everyone. And, K seems like the guy where he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room, but he's not really the smartest guy in the room. It's kind of like an Iron Man 2. Where, um, God, what's his name? Uh, Hammer, the, the Hammer Industries guy, whatever his first name is. But he's like, oh, we're not the, you know, you're not the only rich guy in the room. It's like, we're all rich guys. But then it's Tony Stark. It's like, well, of course he's better than you. It's like he has better technology, stuff like that. So, yeah, you're both rich, you're both smart. But he's more rich and smarter than you. So it's like, you know... Hammer's not the smartest guy in the room, but he thinks he is. It's like, it's, you know, Tony Stark. And in this case, I think, like, Yuichi is Tony Stark, and then K is, you know, Hammer. And so I think, ultimately, when Manabu tells the um, results, I think K is gonna, 
you know, fall apart. And Yuichi, he's going to have that smug grin of just, you know, that evil smile he always uh, puts on. And that's what I believe is going to happen because it, it just makes too much sense. I don't see how it couldn't happen. But hey, you never know. This It's always throwing loops at you. I find it really interesting. I want... I mostly wonder how Maria plays into this. Because she's management, so obviously she knows. And it's not like she was really away from anyone. And to me, I don't know. I, I'm interesting to find out what's going to happen. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I may make a video on that. Uh, I may have some other videos coming out on some other animes. Um, but we'll see kind of how I'm feeling. Um, but that's about it. So yeah.